Hey y'all, welcome back to my channel. I am going to do a wee little unboxing. <laughs> it has to be a wee little unboxing because my phone is already at, oh my God, why aren't you plugged in level? But I figured I would show you what I got in my very first Nightworms box. So Nightworms is a subscription box. Does it seem like there's been an influx of book subscription boxes and just subscription boxes in general since the pandemic? I think there's been a lot of opportunities for collaborations and people, um, you know, to put things together since we've been shut down. But anyway, I recently heard about Nightworms and it is a horror focused subscription book box. So I got two books and then some stuff. And usually I like the stuff the best. But I'll show you the books too. So let's see, how about the stuff first? Oh, I also, probably one of the reasons why I love Nightworms or the reason why I wanted to order it was because of the logo, which is badass. All right, the stuff. I got a package. I've already opened this, so these are not like blind reactions or anything. I got a caramel apple tea. You knew I love tea. Here's what it looks like. Mmm. <laughs> I can't tell if I'm smelling it or any of the other things in this room to smell. A bookmark. Kills and Thrills is what the theme is for this month. So this is a bookmark. And the Nightworms logo on a magnet. I have a spot maybe over my own face. <laughs> that would be ridiculous, wouldn't it? How about right here for now? A Chat Cemetery sticker. So it looks like this is a Stephen King podcast. I'll have to check that out. And the other sticker is, I'm not going to hurt you. I'm just going to bash your brains in. So that's from The Shining. When Jack is chasing Wendy around the hotel. So that's the stuff. I love stickers and stuff. Okay, and then it came with two books. One is Sanatorium. So I believe that this was actually also a book of the month book a couple of months ago because I saw several people on Bookstagram talking about it, but it looks like it was also a book for Reese's Book Club. So um, I think it's gotten, gotten some good buzz lately. Everyone's in danger. Anyone could be next. Have hidden by forests and overshadowed by threatening peaks. Last Summit has always been a sinister place. Long plagued by troubling rumors, the former abandoned sanatorium has since been renovated into a five-star minimalist hotel. An imposing isolated getaway spot in the Swiss Alps is the last place Ellen Warner wants to be, but Ellen's taken time off from her job as a detective, so when her estranged brother Isaac and his fiance Laurel, Laura, invite her to celebrate their engagement at the hotel, Ellen really has no reason not to accept. Uh, something's wrong. She can feel it. She's getting nervous. Laura's missing. And she's a detective, so she's off to figure out what happened to Laura. No one has yet realized that another woman has gone missing, and she's the only one who could have warned them just how much danger they're all in. So that's Sanatorium. And then the second book, I love these covers so much. The second book is Later by Stephen King. And take a look at that. I love the sort of classic, uh, what were those called? Penny serial looking things. I have the one, the Joyland one upstairs, although I've never read it. 
I've never read one of these hard case crime imprint books. Sometimes growing up means facing your demons. <laughs> Amen. The son of a struggling single mother, Jamie Conklin just wants an ordinary childhood. But Jamie is no ordinary child. Born with an unnatural ability his mom urges him to keep secret, Jamie can see what no one else can see and learn what no one else can learn. But the cost of using his ability is higher than Jamie can imagine, as he discovers when an NYPD detective draws him into the pursuit of a killer who has threatened to strike from beyond the grave. Hmm. All right. Sure. I can see why this book plus this book equals a sticker from The Shining. Because we've got the hotel and the kid with the abilities, the supernatural abilities. I actually really like how Stephen King includes children in most of his stories. Um, it's just something that I appreciate about him. He always, it seems like there's a... A tendency for towards a respectfulness for kids and also some fear you know and I think he talked about that at the very beginning of Pet Cemetery in the foreword how some of his biggest fears are related to loss or you know things like that of his own children so that really helped inspire some of his early earlier works I also got this book. A friend of mine brought a couple of books to put in my little free library in the yard. And when I looked at this one, I'm not sure what it is about this one that just kind of like pulled me, but I <laughs> snatched it before she could put it in the little free library. The Gypsy Moth Summer. 1992 Gypsy Moth Caterpillars Have Invaded Avalon Island on Islet of the East Coast. This white lady lives on a grand estate. Her husband's a black dude. Their kids are biracial. Looks like some kid falls in love with their biracial son. The love feels as urgent to her as the questions about the new and deadly cancer showing up across the island. So that also sounds pretty interesting. By Julia Fiera, who I've never read anything by as far as I know. So I'm interested in that too. It was a discard book from the library, so my friend Betsy was going to put it in the little in the little library, but no, no, I will be reading that first. And then I also got two books from my regular library. They all fall down. I'm not sure why I got this, but I got it for a reason and in a perfect world. I also got this one for a reason, but I don't remember what they were. They may have been... Um, they may be categories for the Read Harder Challenge, so I'll have to take a look, a look at those to see why I picked these from the library. Okay, I gotta go because my phone's gonna die. Oh, one more. <laughs> so, mini book haul and unboxing, just for you in the middle of the night with a phone that's just about to die. Okay, I will catch you on the next one.